Hi guys, welcome back. Jeff Allen off the Green Iron. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I thought I'd try a little experiment today. I uh, recently picked up one of the uh, mosquito nets off uh, Amazon and uh, not loving the white color. Even though white does repel insects, I uh, want to make it a little more, uh, you know, less, less obtrusive, less noticeable perhaps uh, in the bush. So what I have is uh, a large, large pot and originally I want to uh, dye this a darker color. So I had thought of using a uh, kind of a commercial stain, but then I thought, uh, I know I have a number of white shirts that have uh, been quite easily dyed with uh, a coffee spill or two. So I had uh, a number of these hotel uh, packages of uh, coffee, albeit probably stale by now. And I took, I'm, I'm taking three of these, putting them in the, uh, in the pot and adding a uh, liter of uh, hot boiling water and we're going to let it steep for a bit add our white mosquito netting and see if it'll stain it a darker color just to be a little less uh, less noticeable in the woods let's see give it a try Now the water's added, I'll just agitate the uh, little packets in here. And the good thing about these packets is it's also going to keep the uh, individual grinds off the uh, from the material, so I don't have to in, have all these coffee grounds embedded in the fabric. Well, I'm going to definitely have the best smelling uh, mosquito netting around. It smells really good giving off a very dark roast, dark roasted color. I'm going to just dye the whole bag itself and then I just have to agitate it in this uh, kind of in this coffee mixture to make sure um, it uh, really sinks into all the all the pores. Probably have about two inches of water in the bottom of this pot and uh, I can't see the bottom now, so it looks like it's it's uh, certainly going to be dark enough. All right, home of truth. Let's add the uh, the netting. <laughs> it looks like with some of that agitation, I did break open one of those pods. No. Well, being a, being a polyester material, it really didn't take the color as, as well as I would have liked. So I think we're going to have to resort to the stain. So that didn't work as well as I'd like. I guess it's being a polyester material, it didn't really absorb the, uh, uh, the color, uh, much like a cotton perhaps would. So we're going to go uh, right to our, our stain. This is a, a Jocko Bean penetrating stain from Minwax. We're going to put this to it and uh, see what happens. I'm just going to pour it right in and mix it around. Oh yeah, it's sticking good. I 
agitate the product. Maybe it'll get all over it. Really soak that up. So I've used about half a can in here and uh, I think I'm going to have to get my hands dirty and open up this bag. net itself I want dye not the uh, not the bag so much so what a mess you can see where some of the spots have taken it and uh, the other ones haven't got that far yet Mixed it all up and uh, now I'm going to pull it out and try to hang it up here to, to air dry the best I can. And, uh, it looks quite, quite a bit darker now, that's for sure. Oh. I forgot, I forgot the ring at the top is under like, it's just a big spring, so when it unfolded, I just got splattered, I got just stained everywhere, I gotta go clean off. Well, it definitely worked, um, I've got a what do you call it a cool bit of a white band around the uh, around part of it that didn't take the color but uh, other than that I think it's going to be a bit of a success so we're going to keep trying to get some of the uh, some of the stain of the pores in the um, you can see the little collection of stain in some of the pores so it's not Gonna wipe those out the best we can. And our pot's a bit of a write-off. I think we got an extra working pot for something, but that's definitely not gonna be used for corn anymore. Anyways, uh, let it air dry, and once it's done, we'll uh, show you what the final product looks like. some of these blotches where it's kind of sealed sealed in there was excess 
material there and just kind of rub it. It seems to uh, remove some of these filled holes. Be able to keep rubbing and get that white band out of there. There's lots of stain in here. I can feel it. It's really pretty oozy here. I pinch that white area with some of this other more saturated area. It seems to come out. This will all be a distant memory when I safe and sound inside this bug screen in the middle of black fly and mosquito season. This one's designed for a king size or queen size bed, but you can see the uh, size of it now. So it hangs from a central central point at the top. You can see how much area would be a safe reprieve away from any any pests. Now the side just is an overlap, it just kind of folds over. But uh, I can always attach drawstrings if I need to, or uh, any number of other fasteners. I'm gonna stitch around the bottom a uh, an extra <coughs> You know something a little heavier and maybe some uh, make some stake out points but uh, that's certainly uh, some peace of mind for staying overnight in the woods in the middle of bug season that's for sure hey guys well if you haven't already don't forget to click up here and subscribe to my channel and down here to check out some of my latest videos looks like this one was a bit of a success bit of a, a waste of stain but uh, I'll, uh, I'll that'll be a distant memory when this this uh, bug net is kind of uh, saving me and brings me some, some peace of mind and uh, keeping me free of those uh, mosquitoes and black flies this season. So until next time, Jeff off the gridiron. Thanks for watching. Take care.